You can use me. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Father, consume me. You can use me. Father, consume me. Use me. Breathe life into me. Here on this altar, Father, consume me. Can use me. Here on this altar. Good morning. My God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Here on this altar, here on this altar, here on this altar, here on this altar, here on this altar. I lift my hands here on this altar. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. From this altar, My God, thank you, Lord. My God, thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank you, we bless you, we praise you. Can I just admonish you this morning? I think that you can pause for just a minute and find something to be so grateful for. Like anything, like anything, like you can just pause this morning, like you can pause this morning and find something to be grateful for like like pause like don't think any further don't think about anything else like only think about the goodness of God like home in right now like pause stop don't write another thing just just think just pause and think for just a minute of just how good God is like last night I was putting groceries in our house, right? And like, I'm putting the groceries in my house and I just, I just got overwhelmed by the goodness of God. And the reason that I got overwhelmed by the goodness of God was because I remember when I didn't have groceries. <laughs> like I remembered when I didn't have groceries and I'm talking about like, I remember, like I remember, I remember when my refrigerator was empty. I remember when I was believing God for enough. I remember when I didn't have choices and decisions or when I had to put myself in a position to choose what we were gonna eat, right? Or I felt like I was monitoring food. like. I looked in my refrigerator and as I put things on my cabinet as and I was I was unpacking my groceries because sometimes we can take the little things for granted. Like we can take little things like if we always have food, we'll take food for granted, right? Like if we always have food, we'll have food, we'll take food for granted. We'll take food for granted. So as I was unpacking Every bit of grocery, every time I was putting something on top of the refrigerator, every time I was putting something inside my refrigerator, every refrigerator, every time I was putting something in the cabinet, my heart was being overwhelmed with just how good God is, like how good God is. And sometimes we take like groceries for granted, right? Because if that's something we're used to having, right? But until you've been without, 
And then I remember places when I didn't have gas in my car, like when I just had just enough gas, like just enough gas, like just enough gas. Like, and I'm just thankful that I've never ran out of gas. Like there's always gas in my car and I don't care. Cause see, sometimes we'll take our work. We'll take, we'll take our work efforts. We'll take all these things and we'll take those things and choose to make those things. Like we'll, we'll, we'll think those things are the things that provide for us. But I know without a doubt who provides for me. And the person that provides for me is God almighty. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the one that provides for me. And so I want you to pause this moment. I need you to stop and I just need you to think about the goodness of God, right? I want you to look, I want you to touch your body. I remember, I remember one time when we didn't have hot water, right? Like, can I just be real? Can I be transparent for a minute? Um, we were just going through some things financially and our gas had got shut off and we did not have hot water in the house. And I remember that I was taking buckets and boiling water and creating water so the boys could take their bath right? Like I remember this, remember? And there are so many of us that suffer in silence. People don't even know what you're going through. People don't know what you've even been through. People don't even know what you believe in God for today. Like, like there are so many things that we take. I'm talking about like boiling water, boiling water so we could take a bath, <laughs> boiling water so we could, we could take a bath. Right. And then, and, and, and believing God, like believing God, like our, our, I remember our gas bill was astronomical and my husband had so many health issues and we had so many bills. See, I'm just, I'm just telling you, I have so much to be grateful for. That's why my apartment doesn't like where you stay in an apartment you don't have a, that this don't this don't bother me baby this shelter <laughs> like this is shelter like this is shelter I have shelter like I have shelter like I have shelter yep I need a new car yep there's been but I I have a car right right but I got food in my fridge I was like my kids don't have to go come to I remember one night the boys went to the fridge and I was fixing a meal for us and it wasn't a great meal. I'm just going to be honest. Right. And I could see the, the, the worry in their face, but they never said anything. They didn't, they never said anything. And so I pulled together this meal because the women in my family have just taught you how to survive off a little, like just how to survive off a little. And I was pulling together this meal and it wasn't a whole big meal. And I just began to trust God. And I told them, I said, it's going to be all good. We're going to have, we're going to have, we're going to have one. They were like, mom, there's nothing in this fridge. And I'm like, it's, it's all good. It's going to be food in this fridge. And I just laid my heart on the altar before God. And when I tell you what a mighty God we serve, he has never left us without. He has never left us without. He has never forsaken us. So I just need you this morning to set your affection on God. Like I need you to set your affection on God. Like you, I need you. I need you to don't think this morning about anything that you don't have, right? I remember that I not to think about anything you don't have, like anything that you don't have. Think about all that you have. Yeah. He's never left or forsaken us. He is a good, good father. He is a, he is a faithful father. And when I started thinking about all the things that I didn't have that I have now, my God, my God, just the little things, just the significant things, gas in my car, food in my refrigerator. I remember, I remember when I didn't have a washer and dryer and I was lugging loads of laundry to the laundry mat. And for somebody that's like, okay, at least you had a place to stay. But I was believing God for that. Like I was believing God for quarters. <laughs> I was believing God for dollars. I was believing God. And I remember I was taking, go, going to the laundry mat. And I think I had to have about $15 to wash. And I was, lo I was lo lugging the clothes. And it was becoming so overwhelming, right? I'm just telling you my truth. Like it was becoming so overwhelming. Like I could just tell the enemy was trying to press me and press in. And as I was going into the laundry mat, I was on the phone with my friend Dre right I was on the phone with Jess and I I know that she could hear probably the despair in my voice that's why you need a praying friend and I remember she said this is the last day you have to take all these clothes to the laundry mat <laughs> this is the last day you have to take all these clothes to the laundry mat and we just begin to praise God because I could tell you can I tell you something I could feel a complaint 
trying to come up in my mouth. Like I could feel a complaint wanting to surface, right? I could feel it. Like, and we get there sometimes. Come on now, be real. We ain't always okay with every situation. We ain't, we ain't always feel good in every situation. We, we don't always love every situation we in. And I could feel a, a complaint coming up out my mouth. And I remember just said, this is the last day you have to do this. I remember her saying, this is the last day you're going to have to do this. And we stood in faith. And instead of complaining, I just begin to bless God. I just begin to thank God. Like right there, I'm just, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the opportunity and the chance that you're providing for me right now. I just begin to bless and thank God. And when, be, when I begin to bless and thank him, do you know my praise? It was conducive for a miracle. I, I, it was just conducive for a miracle. It was conducive. It created an atmosphere for something. And before I knew it, somebody was saying to me, and it wasn't, that moment wasn't even about that. I don't want to ruin it with the miracle of what happened next. That moment wasn't even about that. Like, that's not what that moment was about. But I promise you a little bit later, somebody had blessed me with a washer and a dryer. And so my position is when a complaint raises up to sit myself in praise. So I want you to pause. I want you to start thinking about all the things God has done for you. Don't let the enemy let you steal. Not another minute, not another second, not another hour. Do not let him rob you of your joy any longer. He has spent way too much time, time to try to get you to focus on what you don't have. That's all he's been doing. That's all he's been doing. Trying to get you to focus on what you don't have. Trying to get you to focus on what you're lacking. I know some of you have been longing to get married. Like it's a desire in your heart. But if the enemy, if the enemy will, if the enemy keeps pressing in on you, like you got to be grateful for where you are. Like you got to be grateful for where you are. You got to, you got to set your affection. He's coming. Your wife is coming. Your husband is coming. They're going to manifest themselves before you know it. You just got to set yourself in a position of praise. You got to know that in this single season, God is working out something for you. Right. God is working out. God is working out something for you. He's growing you up. He's maturing you. He's putting you in the position for your wife or your husband. He's developing you. And so instead of thinking of you're lonely or, oh my gosh, it's another holiday by myself. I've been there, did that. Right. Oh my gosh, it's another holiday by myself. Oh my gosh, I'm still by myself. Oh my gosh, somebody else got engaged. Oh my gosh, somebody else got married. Right. Instead of thinking, that way, thinking that you're in another situation without, why don't you start blessing God for your single season? <laughs> why don't you start blessing God for your single season? Why don't you start saying, Lord, thank you for my singleness, because I know that you're developing something in me. I know you're growing me in the things of the Lord. I know you're teaching me how to set my affection on you. So I just want to encourage you this morning. Do not spend another day, another moment, another hour complaining about what you don't have. Don't start thinking about your lack. Your, your ability to think about those things has been distorting your process to see and experience the hand of God. You've been like, you've been missing it. Just thank him. Just believe God, right? Just believe God, believe God. I've been there before. I know what it's like. It was not like, can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? It's a desire of mine to get married again. That's a desire in my heart. But I had to come on, Lashandi. I had to put a position that I lack absolutely nothing and that God is my kinsman redeemer. And if God is for me, who can be against me? And I had to set my affection on the things above. And I had to render this season in my life to God and say, you know what, Lord God, this is a season in my life. And in due timing, you're going to do absolutely everything that you need to do for me. You're going to, you're going to order my steps. You're going to cause the divine connection. Favor is going to become before me. And before you know it, I'll be married, right? That's got to be your position. And then allow God to do the greater work in the inside of you and position you to prosper. See, God's desire is to position you to prosper, not for you to position yourself, not for you to position yourself to prosper. God's desire is for him to put. And before you know it, your single season will be over. Your single season, your single season will be over. Like you lack nothing. So I want you to count it all joy. 
right? I do this thing and I call it counting it up. I want you to count it all joy this morning. I do not want you to spend another moment on what you don't have. Don't focus on that anymore. The enemy has been trying to get you every, you've been picking yourself apart. You've been picking your body apart. You've been picking your life apart. You've been kicking your finances apart. You've been kicking, picking all these different things apart and you come on now. You lack Stasi. You lack nothing. You lack nothing. You got to count it all joy. You got to count it up. You got to start thinking of all the wonderful things that you do have and stop thinking in lack because lack only produces more lack. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Lack only produces more lack. That's all that lack will do. It will produce a focus on lack is going to produce more lack. That's all it's going to do. A, pro, a focus on negativity is going to produce more, more negativity. Jesus says to us in Matthew, he says, why are you worried about these things? Why are you spending any time worrying about on what I take care of? What, why are you, why are you, why are you pressed into something that I take care of? Why is your mind on what you don't have? Why is your mind on what, not on what you do have? And you might say, Lakeisha, I don't have a lot. That's good. That's fine. You might not have a lot in this season, but can I tell you something? I promise you just like the widow uh, with the oil, he will take a little and make your much. I've seen him. He's too good. He's too faithful. He will take your little and make it much. So this morning, position yourself into thinking of all that you have. Bless his name. Thank him. Glorify him. Like the, glorify him. He will take the widow's oil. He will take the little bit you have. If you would just make a decision to be faithful, if you would just make a decision to present to him what you have, he will take the little bit of have, right? If you don't know the story of Elisha and the widow's oil, a prophet died and he left debts. His widow and his two sons could not pay it, right? And the prophet Elijah comes in and he asks her, he asks her, what does she have? What does she have in her hands? What does she have in her hands? What does she have available her to her? This is second Kings four, one and seven. Uh, the Lord used an interesting way to, to get the prophet Elijah to meet the woman and her son's need. So let me just read that to you. It says, now there happened to be a certain woman who had been the wife of a member of the guild of prophets. She cried out to Elijah, my husband who served you has died. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, but a creditor has come to take away my children take away my children, <laughs> right? To take away my children. That's big right there into the entered into indentured servitude. Elijah responded, what shall I do for you? Tell me what you have in your house. She replied, your servant has nothing in this entire house except for a flask of oil. He told her, go out of all, go out to all your neighbors in the surrounding streets and borrow lots of pots from them. So he anticipated that it was going to change. He anticipated that it was going to be more. He said, don't get just a few empty vessels. Either then go in and shut the door behind you, taking only your children and pour oil into all the pots as each one is filled, set it aside. So she left Elijah, shut the door behind her and her children. And while they kept on, kept on bringing vessels to her, she kept on pouring oil. When the last of the vessels had been filled, she told her son, go bring me another pot. He said, there is not another pot. Then the oil stopped flowing. After this, she went and told the man of God what had happened. So he said, go sell the oil, pay your debt, and you and your children will be able to live off the proceeds. Live means there had to be enough oil to sustain her for the rest of their life. And so I know without a doubt, I know without a doubt, God will always do something supernatural for us. I know that I've seen the supernatural side of God, but I know for a fact, we got to be grateful with where we're at. Like we got to be grateful for where we're at. Some of us are so set on so many things in the future that we have not learned to be grateful for where we're at. We don't know that the little that we have can become so much. That's why I am so big about you sowing seed. Right. And people think that people think, oh, my gosh, when preachers start talking about money, they're just after our money. No, I want I always talk to you about sowing seed because I know it's kingdom. And I know that everything reproduces after its own kind. And so she placed the oil in the position for multiplication, which is why I'm always like, put a seed in your hand. If I don't care if it's 
Can I tell y'all something? I've had 60 cents to sow before and I put that 60 cents before God. And I just believe that kingdoms, kingdom is, is what kingdom does. Every seed multiplies after its own kind. And when we position ourselves to obey the word of God, it will do something supernatural for us. It will do something supernatural for us. So this morning, I need you to focus on greatness, gratefulness. And that that's your seed. When you can sow a grateful seed in a season when you don't feel grateful, when things are not working out. Come on now. When you can put a seed, when you can put a seed, a seed of thank you, when you can put a seed of thank you in place, when you don't even feel like being thankful. Right. I remember sometimes my husband, when he would be so sick, he would just be laying on his back going, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 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 And it wouldn't even make sense that he should be grateful. It wouldn't even make sense. It wouldn't make sense that he was grateful, but he would put in a C. He would thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, I thank you. So this morning, I just want you to spend just a few minutes. Just count it up. Just count it up. Just count it up. Just count it up. Look around you. Look at your lights. Look at the fact that you got water. Look at the fact that you got a place to stay. It might not. Can I tell you something? My aunt tells this powerful story. She tells this powerful story of living in this little 600 feet shack. And it was a tiny shack. And she had given up her house for this shack because she was going through a terrible divorce. She said, but she took that little 600 square feet shack and she cleaned that shack like it was a mansion and she took care of that shack like it was a mansion. And before she knew it, right, I'm telling you her testimony. She was working in a bank. Her credit was not good. She could not afford a house and she was working in the bank. She didn't even have enough money, right? She was going through this terrible divorce and she was in the bank. And as she was in the bank, she was sitting there, right? And this man came up to her and he said, you know what? You should buy my house. And she was looking at him. She was like, I can't buy your house. And he was like, you should buy my house. And he was persistent. See, God was sending someone her way. And before that, can I tell you, can I tell you what she planted? Can I tell you what she planted? She had a little bit of change, right? Because her testimony has just blessed me beyond that. She had a little bit of change. She pulled outside. She was up outside this church and she was praying and she was asking God and she took the little bit of change she had and she took that little bit of change and she put it on the porch. And when she put that little bit of change on the porch, she just trusted and she just believed God, right? She put a little bit of change on the porch and she walked away. And that I just believe her sacrifice of praise, her sacrifice to get in position changed her life. And so as she set the little bit of change on her porch, she got back in the car. She was crying. She was welling. She went back to work and a little bit later, God would send someone her way. And so she was in there. She's in a little bitty tiny shack, little bitty house, but she is cleaning that house. She is stewarding over that house. She is treating that house like it's a mansion, like it's the best house ever. And she was at work. And as she's at work, she's sitting at work and she's in the bank. And this man walks up to her and he says to her, he says, I want you to buy my house. And she was like, I can't afford to buy your house. And he said, I want you to buy my house. And he kept coming and he kept coming. And so finally he said, let me take you to see the house. Right. And she was like, OK. And so she went to see the house and the house was a really, really, really nice house. And she was like, there is no way I can afford this. And he says to her, he, was, he says, look, I need you to do. He said, this is what I want you to do. I'm going to owner finance this house. I just need you to give me five hundred dollars a month right? $500 a month. But at that time she didn't even have an excess 250, like $500 a month was overwhelming for her. But the Lord would put something else in position. And her mom would, would be like her mom, her mom was moving back in town. And she said, I'll pay the other part of that. I'll pay the other part of that. She's like, I'll pay the other part of that. He owner financed that house until she was able to get her credit together, until she was able to get ourselves in a position. She still owns this house to this day. She's able to lease that house to someone else. And now she's living in another house that's part of her dreams. Why? Because of her position. She positioned herself for a miracle. She positioned, positioned herself to trust God when it was not cool, when it was ugly. Like she positioned herself right? She positioned herself. She honored God. 
right? She knew that she needed something that only God could do. And when she could pl- complain, she didn't complain. She blessed God. She thanked God. She continued to serve God. And you know what God did? God produced a miracle for her. And the same miracle working God that is her God is the same miracle working God that we serve today. And so I just want you to position yourself in praise. She positioned herself in praise. She worshiped God. She honored God. She set her a affection upon God. There is something supernatural that happens when we set our affection on God and nothing else. We've been complaining so long. We've been in a situation and a place of complaint for so long. Like that has become our nature. And so this morning, I want you to position yourself in the praise. I want you to open. I don't want you to have another complaining thought. I don't want you to complain that one more time. I don't want you to have another complaining thought. I want you to make today is the decision that I lack nothing. That's a, that's written on my mirror. I lack absolutely nothing. And for those of y'all, whoever this is pulling on my spirit, like, um, that's a good scripture. Uh, Meredith, can we put that scripture up? Jess, can we find that scripture? I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I love that scripture. Somebody's pulling on my spirit about their singleness. I want you to take the position today in your singleness that you lack absolutely nothing. I don't want you to spend another day worried about being single. Not another day. You've been too worried about being alone. I want today to be the day that you take the position. You know what? I lack nothing. And in my singleness, God is my kinsman redeemer. And God has given me absolutely everything I need. And I am not going to carry the weight of being single with me anymore. I need you to abandon, abandon the thought that you are by yourself. Honey, you are not alone. Honey, you are not alone. Honey, and that's not for woman or man. You are not alone. You lack nothing. That's something I keep before me. I lack nothing. God supplies all my needs, every last one of my needs, according to his riches and glory. And if I will set my affection on him, I don't care if you're going through a divorce. I don't care if you've been in a divorce. You lack absolutely nothing. God has everything, everything, everything you need. Don't carry of the way. Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. And he's been waiting on you to make this decision today. Come on. I hear you. Holy ghost. He's been waiting on you to make this decision today that I will no longer see myself in lack. I am not alone. God is with me. And if God is with me and if God is for me, then who can be against me? And I take my position in Psalms 1 and 3. Thank you, Meredith. I thank, take my position in that today that I lack nothing and I will be so grateful and I will just find ways. My God, find ways, find ways. He's coming. She's coming. God is going to fitly. You, I could do a whole course on marriage. I promise I could. And, and becoming prepared for marriage. I promise. I promise you I could. I could. I could. I could. I could do a whole course on that. God is preparing you. And I promise you in the end, you're going to see God. He's going to restore you and you're going to have the marriage of a lifetime. If you will wait on him in your singleness, if you will trust him while you're single, if you will say to him, you know what? I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to focus on being without, even if your marriage is broken up right now, if you will not focus on the brokenness of your marriage, if you will focus on the goodness of Jesus. I lack nothing. See, the enemy will make you think that whatever it is you're missing is the only thing that can complete you. That's his device. That's the thing that he sends our way to make you think that whatever you're missing is only going to complete you. And I know some of you, Olive, I know what you believe in God for. I know some of you are believing God for some really major things. You need to see the hand of God. But even if it doesn't happen today, there's always tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. And sometimes we're like, God, you didn't show up. And sometimes God doesn't show up right there at the end hour. But I promise you when he shows up, he's always on time. He's there. He's there for us. He's there for us. He's with us. He doesn't leave us. He never forsakes us. And the promises of God are yes and amen. And if you'll get over in Matthew 6 and you'll begin to just meditate on that and you'll begin to just chew on that and stop saying you don't want anybody. Stop saying I'll just be by myself. That is your lie. That is not a truth. Stop saying, I don't want to know, I don't want to be with nobody. That is not your lie. God said, Genesis, he corrected that. 2.18, he said, it's not good for man to be alone. 
It's not good for a woman to be alone. Stop saying, I don't want nobody. I don't want to be. I just want to be. Mm-mm. It is not good. God desired, designed us to be in relationship and God designed us to be in fellowship. That which you've been saying is the lie that you've been telling yourself. You've been telling yourself that lie for so long. You've been telling yourself that lie for so long. That's the lie that you've been telling yourself. And we're not going to tell ourselves those lies no more. We're, we're not going to tell ourselves those lies no more. We're going to hold on to the truth of God. We're going to hold to, ha- we're going to have, we're going to hold on to the spirit of God. So I want to give you some things this morning. Good morning. Welcome to coffee and conversations with Lakeisha. My God, father God, can we just bless him? We are grateful. We are grateful for you. We are grateful. We are grateful. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercy. We thank you, father God, for your presence. We thank you, father God, for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you, Father God. This is the day that we set our minds on things above. And we thank you, Jesus Christ, for giving us our holiness. We thank you for power. We thank you for protection. We thank you, Lord God, that we are getting in the rhythm of God, Lord God. Lord God, we are standing in truth. We are standing in your righteousness. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for renewing our mind according to the word of God. Now let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength. Father God, we lift up every essential worker in this world, everybody that's on the front line. And I, even though the country is opening back up, Father God, we will have wisdom that it is not as safe. We will have wisdom that it is not as safe. We will be protective, Lord God. We will, we will walk in good hygiene, Lord God. We will walk in different and higher levels of discernment, Father God. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and revelation knowledge in your word. I thank you, Father, for divine appointments. I cancel every assignment of the enemy. I bind every principality and every spirit of darkness that has been hindering us. And I thank you, Father God, that the angels are before us. I thank you, Lord God. The angels are with us, Lord God. They are encamped around us. So angels, we say, go do your bidding now in the name of Jesus. My God, thank you, Father God, for your resurrecting power in Jesus name. Amen. So I just want to give you a little bit more. There are a few more things that I need to give you, right? There are a few more things that I need to focus in on. This is the process. We have been talking about renewing our mind. And part of this came in because of a scripture we read in Peter. And because of the scripture that we read in Peter, it just kind of took off for us, right? And it started making us think more into the things of God. And so right now we are going to talk about seven steps to renewing your mind. I found this amazing article that I I want to share with you today. So let me go back to the scripture that sparked this. It was first Peter and it was the third. And I'm going to read through the eighth verse. It says, blessed, gratefully praised and adored be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant and boundless mercy has caused us to be born again. That is to be reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed and set apart for his purpose to an ever living hope and confident assurance through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, born anew into an inheritance, which is imperishable beyond the reach of change and undefiled and unfading reserved in heaven for you who are being protected and shielded by the power of God through your faith for salvation that is ready to be revealed for you in the last time. In this you rejoice greatly, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the geniusness of your faith, which is much more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested and purified by fire, may be found result in your praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not even see him now, you believe and trust in him and you greatly rejoice and delight with inexpressible and glorious joy, receiving as the result, the outcome, the consummation of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So we're going to pause right there, right? Can I just do this? Thank you. 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 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, 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 thank you. I just owe God a 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 praise. I just owe God a thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Like I just owe God that praise. I just needed to pause and just say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, you are so good to me. Father, you are so good to me. You are so faithful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you that I didn't get caught up. Thank you when I was sold out to something else that you still sold out were sold out to me. Thank you for honoring me when I didn't honor you. Thank you for loving me when I didn't love myself. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your favor. Thank you that you chose to use me as your vessel. Thank you. 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 Thank you that I did not lose my mind. Thank you. 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 Thank you for so much grace and thank you for so much mercy. Thank you. 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 I honor you. I bless you. I glorify you. I magnify you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, y'all don't know. I almost lost my mind. And when I say I almost lost my mind, that's not a figure of speech. Like I felt like I was on my mind. Mind was checking out and depression had set in. And I wanted, like when I lost my husband, I felt like I was losing my mind. Like, and this wasn't the first time, but this time I felt like I was checking out. Like I was going there, right? That, that, that I was going there. Like I was going there. Like I was going there. Like I felt like I was losing my mind. My mind, I was so overwhelmed. I was so consumed. I was so plagued with thoughts. I promise you, baby, I know what it's like to feel like you were losing my mind. I felt like I was coming to the end of myself. I'm just telling you. So when I say thank you for my mind, when my grandmother used to say, I'm a mind, he's a mind regulator. When I used to hear my grandmother say that, and she would be like, he's a mind regulator. When my grandmother used to be like, he's a mind regulator, I know what it's like for him to be a mind regulator. So when I say, Lord, I thank you that I did not lose my mind. It's a shout. It's a praise. It's so real because I was about to lose my mind. I was about to lose my mind. I was at the edge of myself. I could not take another thing. I could not take another moment. I could not have another minute of pressure. I, I was going to bust. And when I tell you the lover of my soul, my God came in and he saved me and his resurrecting power began to move. But can I be honest? I had to take a stance. I had to make a decision. You know what, girl, you got to get up. You got to get up, girl. 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 You got to get up. The enemy is coming for your purpose, girl. You got to get up. The enemy is coming for your life, girl. You got to get up, girl. You got to get up. You're going to have to get up out this bed. You're going to have to get up out this wine. You're going to have to get up, girl. You got to get up. You got to get up. You got to get up. You're going to have to get up. He is trying to take your family out, girl. You got to get up. You're going to have to get up. And that's what I had to begin to say myself, girl, you're going to have to get up. You got 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 to get up and you got to get in your purpose. You got to get up. You got to get up. You got to understand how much love God loves you. Girl, you're going to have to get up because he was trying to let me. He was trying to put me like I felt like the enemy had his foot on my neck. Neck. He had a pressure. He had a pressure. He had me in a pressure hole. Right. And so grace stepped in and the Holy Spirit began to minister to me and he began to say to me, this is not it for you. I have so much promise for you and I have so much purpose for you. Lakeisha, get up. And he used my son one day. I was laying in the bed and I was I was just laying there and my oldest son called me and he said, mother. He said, I know you're a better mother than this and you are leaving my brothers to fend for themselves. He will send a laborer in the field. He will send a laborer in the field. He said, and you are leaving your brothers to fend for myself. And that is not my mother. That is not my mother. That is not my mother. You are too good of a mother. You would never leave us like this. And something inside of me said, 
get up, <laughs> get up. Because he wasn't just coming for me, he was coming for my family. He wasn't just coming for me, he was coming for their purpose as well. And he knew if he attacked me that they were unguarded. He knew my husband was already gone. He knew if he won with me that they were unguarded. He knew if he could get me that they wouldn't have what they needed. And so I promise you, I heard the Holy Spirit saying, girl, you got to get up. You got to get up. You got to take your position, right? You got to get up. You got to take your position. And I begin to rise and God begin to send laborers and people begin to love on me. Can I tell you something? I wasn't even in the position for God to heal me because I had closed myself off to everybody else. I wasn't in the position for him to send people to care for me, to send people to nurture me, to send people to love on me. I wasn't even in the position to receive it because I had closed myself out. And if I tell you, I have a teaching. Isolation is the trick of the enemy. If the enemy can get you isolated, if he can get you isolated, it's almost like those animals, you know, when they, they veer off, if he can get you isolated, he will pluck you off. He will pluck, he will pluck you off off. He will, he will come in like a vengeance. He will pluck you off. If he has you to yourself, you were never meant to do life alone. That is the trick. That is the devil. He wants you to think that God can't restore you, that God can't be with you and God can't renew you. And he sent a labor in my feeling. It just happened to be my son. And my, and when he said that something rose in me, something took a rise in me, said, you know what? And then I begin to come out of myself and come into the power of God. Like I begin to come out of myself and come into the power of God and all these other things. Like I was drinking. I never had drank. I, would, I hadn't had anything to drink in 50 years. And my mother called me and she was like, you know, alcohol is a depressant. She didn't even know I had been drinking. So I know that was the Lord. She was like, you know, alcohol is a depressant. Come on now. Can I be real with y'all this morning? Right. Still going to church. Still calling on the name of the Lord, still writing my posts, still writing my devotional, but sinking, but sinking, but sinking, but dying, but leaving, but withering away. Can I tell you, can I tell you my truth this morning? And my mother, I will never forget that phone call because I did not know where the call was coming from. And she was like, you know, alcohol is a depressant. And when she said that, I said, absolutely it is is and I had to begin to position myself but I had to make a decision to get up like I had to make a decision to get up to get up in the name of Jesus and the same strength that came to me is the same strength that will come to you the same that power that invested itself in me is the same power that invests itself in you and that power is Jesus so let me give you these seven steps to renewing your mind because one of the things you're going to have to do is renew your mind. The only way the enemy, the only reason the enemy has been fighting against you and the only re reason the enemy has been using things against you, right? See, I'm delivered from alcohol. I can tell my story now. <laughs> you don't tell your testimony until you get delivered from it. I am way beyond delivered from alcohol, right? I'm way beyond delivered from alcohol. So I can tell my testimony. I can testify. I can testify about my deliverance from that, right? I can testify, I can testify hiding in the closet, trying to deal with some things through a different pain. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you. So I want to give you seven steps to renewing your mind because I know that you need this. And this is so important. Romans 12, two tells us that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. So many of us think that our life is transformed and then our mind is renewed. That is not how it happens. You have to renew your mind if your life is going to transform and it's steps and it's layers. And it's just as much. My uncle said something so profound the other day. He said, how as just as old as you are, as just as old as you are, that is the, that is the layers that you have built in your life. Like that is the layers that you have been built in your life. So if you 45, I'm four, I'll be 47 this year, right? I'll be 47 this year. So I have 47 years of layers. However old you are, you have that many years of layers on you. And so you need to know that as you renew your mind, it comes in steps and it's going to come off in layers and it's not going to happen all at the same time. So you got to be gentle with yourself. 
You got to be gentle with yourself. You're going to have to be easy with yourself. You're going to have to receive grace for God. You're going to have to receive the grace of God you need. But your life, it, your life, you don't transform your life and then your mind gets okay. Your mind got to be the first step, baby. Your mind has to be the first step. The mind has to be the first position, right? And so this is the, the, the process to renewing your mind is also a decision, right? It's a decision. I've got to make a decision that I'm going to renew my mind, right? And this is an article written by someone else, right? You, you're, you got to renew your mind. Here's what I love that he wrote in this article. He said, you're not a sick person trying to get healed. You're a healthy person fighting for sickness. It's all about perspective, right? So when I started reading first Peter to you, one of the reasons we had to skip back and go over to the renewing mind process was because you won't be able to receive what Peter is saying, what apostle Peter is saying to you. If your mind hasn't been renewed, you will not understand your righteousness. You will not understand healing. You will not understand kingdom prosperity. You will not understand the things of kingdom. If your mind is not going to be renewed, you will reduce things to religion and you will do reduce, reduce things to church. And God is not religion. And God is not church. We are the church. He builds the foundation of what he needs to get into this earth upon us. Right? So, so you're not a sick person trying to get healed. You're a hurt, healthy person fighting for sickness. You're not a sinner trying to get holy. You're a saint that's fighting sin. You got to twist your perspective. So the very first thing that he says to us is you need to stop waiting for a miracle to change your mind. Some of us are still waiting on someone to lay their hands on us on the altar and baby, you don't have to have that moment to change your mind. We love miracles. I love miracles, but miracles will probably not even happen. You won't even be able to recognize a miracle. You won't even be able to see a miracle until your mind is renewed. You're not going to even be able to understand a miracle and I'm not going to be able to get to all the steps today. I don't think so. So here's the first thing to know. I didn't realize later on that I had experienced a miracle until I grew to understand how God works. I was driving down the road. I was driving down the road. My friends and I were about 21. We were foolish, right? I was speeding and I made a decision that the car in front of me was going too fast. And instead of me waiting patiently, I dipped on the wrong side of the road to pass in front of them. Well, there were rocks and I was going about a hundred miles an hour. And as I dipped in a hundred miles an hour, there was a truck, a, a semi truck coming towards us, right? Coming towards us. I, my car spent in between this car and the semi truck. We landed in the grass. There is no way that the semi truck shouldn't have missed us. No way whatsoever. As I got older and I got more mature, I realized that I had had a miracle that I know for a fact, angels did something to move me out the way because as we landed in the grass, the semi truck was going to buy that truck should have split, split my car in half. It should have split and we all should have been dead. I didn't realize until my mind became renewed that I had experienced an miracle and I can see it clearly in my day. I saw the truck. I felt the truck. I felt the truck and my window. I know that the truck should have been split in half. Should I know that. I, I know that I knew it should have been split in half. That was a miracle. So you don't wait on a miracle to renew your mind. You make a decision. We need miracles, miracles and signs and wonders are real, but the God's word has to become the standard in my life. Let me give you a couple of more and then we're going to get out and then we'll get the rest on the money. Stop believing that you can't control your thoughts. Stop believing you can't control your thoughts. That's a lie. And you need to repent of the lie that you cannot control your thoughts. You have control of your thoughts. If you did not have control of your thoughts, then the word would not tell you to control your thoughts. <laughs> that Philipp Philippians four and eight says, think about these things. That means you can think on things that are lovely, that are good and of good report. 
You just got to start positioning your mind in a place where you can control your thoughts. It's an excuse and it's not scriptural. Well, my thoughts are just all over the place. No, you better control your thoughts. When I was fighting low self-esteem, the reason that my self-esteem kept being so low is because I was picking myself apart. And I remember I was in the mirror one day, right? And I have freckles and I was about to say something about my freckles. Like I was in the mirror and I was about to pick my freckles apart. I was like, look at these freckles. And God said, come closer. And I said, I heard him. He said, come closer. My face was almost touching the miracle Mir mirror. He said, you are made in my image. And so every time you pick yourself apart, Lakeisha, you are picking me apart. So I had to begin to renew my mind and make a decision that my mouth was not going to pick me apart anymore. He said, you are made in my image. You are in the image of me. So when you pull yourself apart, you're pulling me apart. Get yourself together and think higher of yourself. So I had to begin to put word in scriptures of my mirror is full of scriptures so that I don't see anything, see myself, anything else, but in the image of God. Right. And so these are the things that I speak over myself and I build myself up and I say good things over myself. And even if my weight is up and even if my weight is down, I do not let it get the best of myself. And I walk in the fullness of who God said I am. And then if I feel like my head is feeling puffy, right, if I feel like I'm exalting myself. Then I turn around and I remind myself, charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised again, taking and my setting my thoughts on my word. So if God, God would not tell you to control your thoughts. If you couldn't control your thoughts, Joshua one and eight, you shall meditate on the word of God day and night. The only reason we're not able to meditate on the word day and night. The only reason this isn't manifesting is because we're meditating on other things. We're not meditating on the word day and night. And if you want to experience the fullness of God, the way that you want to experience the fullness of God, you're going to have to change your thoughts. Psalms one and two says on his law, he meditates day and night. So it is very clear in the word of God that we, can control our thoughts and our thoughts don't get to control us. So most of us probably be, need to be like, you know, Lord, I repent for not controlling my th thoughts and not renewing my mind in the word. But this is why you need the help of the Holy Spirit. This is why the hell, why you need the help of the Holy Spirit. You got to be like, Holy Spirit, I need you to help me in this. I need you to help me in this, right? So, and as he does, your spirit gets stronger and you start believing when the spirit is weak. Can I say this to you? When the spirit is weak, the, the mind runs errands for the flesh. That is not my thought. That is not my thought, but this is something I has read. I have read when the spirit is weak, the mind runs errands for the flesh and it starts thinking negative things and it doesn't think things pure and it doesn't think things lovely and it doesn't think good report. I had encountered somebody the other day and their, their, their disposition wasn't pleasant and I almost let their disposition shift my disposition. I did. I was about to go there. I was about to go there because they had went there and God reminded me, no, you are positive. You are lovely. You are kind. You, you do not, you don't have bad days. And because they are acting like this towards you does not mean you have to act like this towards them. Do not let them shift your position. And I say, you know what? I get to have good days. I get to be balanced. I get to be in control of my thoughts. And just because they are not, that's them. And I'm going to leave them in that position. And then I'm going to get in position to pray for them. That that's all. We're going to cover those two. We can't get them in all today. So one and two, let's stop with one and two, right? One and two, you do not need a miracle to change your mind Two, stop believing you can control your thoughts. And then we'll get into the rest, the rest. Cause the next part we need to chew on what you feed your mind becomes your mindset, right? So we'll start with those two today. Isn't God good to us today? Can I bless y'all? Can I pray for y'all? Isn't God good to us today? God is so good. God is so faithful. God is so amazing. God is so 
powerful. God is so intentional with us that he would give us this word, these scriptures and these things to meditate on. He is such a good and a faithful father. Will you just bless his name and acknowledge him to be a good, good God. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for revealing us to us today that we have control over our thoughts. Father God, please forgive us for thinking unpure, unlovely, and not a good report. Holy Spirit, we need your help. And how we're going to get your help today is we're going to rely more on you. Father God, give us the strength, the grace, the capacity to meditate on your word day and night. Remove all the junk out of our spirit in Jesus name. I bind every trap of the enemy that has kept you in cycles of junk back to the pits of hell from which it came. And I thank you, Father God, for the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, we need you. We love you. We lean on you. We trust in you, Lord God. Lord, you said in the word to trust in you, to acknowledge you. We're acknowledging we need you. We're leaning not into our own understanding, Lord God. We're trusting you with our intimate places. We're opening our hearts to you today, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, and we give you all the glory, all the glory. And if this is your first time on the devotional, we welcome you. And so we want to we want to take this next position with you, right? If you've never accepted Jesus Christ, or even if you've accepted Jesus Christ, will you just repeat after me? Will we can we say this prayer together? Because this us saying this prayer together may leave lead us into a position and a place like never before. Dear Jesus, I know I've sinned against you. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm asking you to come into my heart and take away my sins. I promise to love and follow you as best I can. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And then there's two promises I want to share with you. God promises him that cometh unto me, I will no wise cast out John 6, 37. I don't care what sin you've done. I don't care what mistake you made. Whoever has lied to you and told you Jesus will not forgive you. He was a liar. They were a thief and they are the destroyer. There is nothing that you can do that will separate you from the love of God. And if you make this decision today to make Jesus Lord and Savior in your life, I want to disciple you. I want to get some material in your hand. I want you to stay connected to this devotional so that you can grow in grace, grow in righteousness, grow in kingdom and grow in the things of God. The next part of the scripture says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. When you called upon the name of the Lord, that was your guarantee. That was your grace. You are now saved and, and, and we can work out the rest and the Holy spirit will work out the rest. I love y'all so much. One more thing. I want to extend an opportunity for you to partner with this ministry. Log on to the website, LakeishaMJohnson.com. You can become a monthly partner. You can give offerings. We are there. We are a 501 C three. We serve our community. You can find about all our ministry. We have ministry in action, right? Feed the streets. We have partnership with Salvation Army. You can find out all about this ministry on the website. Go get connected. Make a decision today and say, you know what? I'm going to partner with this ministry so that I can help them continue to get the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can find out all out about our ministry team. Everything is on our website. I want you to go. I want you to get more information about this ministry. LakeishaMJohnson.com. I love you so much. Let me bless you for your faithfulness. Father God, I thank you for those that are faithful to kingdom. Father God, I bless the giving of your people. I thank you, Father God, that as they honor you in tithes and offering, even if it's not on this devotional, if it's through this week, Lord God, that they honor you in tithes and offering, Lord God, that you pour out a blessing on them that they do not have room for. Open up the windows of heaven, Daddy God. Show yourself strong financially in their life. Provide for them like never before. Blow it in from the north, south, east, and west. I thank you, Father God, that your favor goes before us. I thank you, Father God, that your favor is producing supernatural increase. I favor, thank you that your favor is causing policies, rules, regulations, and laws to be reversed to our advantage. And I thank you, Father God, for healing us. I thank you for new job opportunities. My God, I receive that by faith for them, Lord God, that you are giving them the jobs that they need, Lord God, that even in a what looks like a bleak situation, Lord God, that you will honor their name, that you will preface their application, that they are going to the head of the line, Lord God, that they will be first in line. Holy Spirit, be the advocate and call and whisper out their names. My God, surplus of jobs coming today miracle signs and wonders, things that don't make sense.
Lord God, we thank you for being healer. We thank you for all you are to us. We take our rest in Jesus today. <laughs> we bless you. We magnify you and we glorify you. Hey, we got one more noonday devotional, 12 to 1230. If, 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 if some of y'all been needing new jobs, I'm just believing God for y'all to get a new job today. And I want you to tell me, Lakeisha, I got my job. I got preferential treatment. Um, today, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Um, if, 12, 12 to 1230. If you're not a part of the special group, go be a part of the special group. I love you, but God loves you even more. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you. May it be rich because it don't add sorrow. If you in sorrow, that is not of God. Extend your faith to believe and trust God. And I'll see you back here Monday morning at 5 a.m. Do me a favor. Go be loved today. Go be loved today. Why? Because it's kingdom, baby.